We're going to be logging some extra data during this session. Nothing you need to worry about, but as we have some new parts, we'll just confirm they're performing to spec. Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode for the 70th Anniversary British Grand Prix. Uh, I thought I'd throw that livery on the car uh, just for fun. Uh, got the race suit, the helmet, the uh, logo. Uh, got it all going for uh, this uh, 70th Anniversary race. Uh, just for fun really. So uh, we've got uh, some resource points to spend. Uh, after the uh, practice sessions and we're going to uh, spend those on a major engine upgrade uh, the uh, just pure uh, engine power uh, that will help us out significantly I remember how important that was uh, in F1 2019 uh, with the racing point car and that Mercedes engine how much that helped us so uh, it's about time we uh, got on top of that uh, in this game uh, can't afford to repair that uh, Jubilee upgrade yet so uh, we have to wait a bit longer for that one, but uh, anyway, uh, let's just get into qualifying and see how we can do. Uh, we've still got the second slowest car, but uh, we have been steadily improving it, so uh, hopefully we can take it to uh, some of the teams ahead of us today uh, in the British Grand Prix. So let's get into qualifying and see where we will start this race. Uh, hopefully uh, we... I just messed up. I did not... Uh, put in the good engine is still running the practice engine so this could be a very tough session for us we'll see what we can do but uh, yeah we are going to be uh, lacking some power this is the engine we've used for uh, the first uh, seven or eight races I think uh, of the season and then also uh, in a bunch of practice sessions uh, since then so uh, we'll do the best we can with this engine but it's probably not going to do us much good so, uh, yeah, we're going to be significantly down on power in this session. I'm just really uh, doing this to see if we can uh, have any chance of uh, just not qualifying last. But in any case, we'll be starting at the back because uh, we'll need to uh, put in the fresh engine uh, and that will uh, br uh, break the Park Ferme. So we'll start from the back anyway. But it's always good to see what the pace is like in qualifying. Uh, even if we are lacking a bit of power, uh, we'll see you know, where the uh, strengths and weaknesses are and, uh, you know, gives us a good chance of uh, driving the car flat out uh, nonetheless. So uh, as we continue through this lap, uh, we get a really horrible line uh, through cops and almost hit the inside wall. So, uh, yeah, we need to uh, probably uh, get a bit more practice in, uh, really. Maggot and Beckett has uh, been a little bit tricky as well, but uh, easy enough uh, on that occasion than with the DRS open. Uh, towards Stowe Corner. Uh, you'll notice we are actually on our second flying lap uh, in the session. Uh, we've got two green sectors, so we are improving uh, on our initial lap time that's got us in uh, last place uh, at the moment. Let's see if we can at least uh, out-qualify Nicholas Latifi uh, for the sake of pride as we run wide uh, through the last corner. We cross the line and we do go faster uh, than Nicholas Latifi, but uh, it's only uh, 21st position so uh, yeah we'll be starting right from the back row Matsushita uh, cannot out qualify anyone further up Esteban Ocon with a pretty horrendous qualifying as well uh, Kimi Raikkonen a long way down but uh, yeah uh, what else uh, Giovinazzi uh, getting through uh, which is a little bit strange uh, to see there uh, Ocon uh, not Ocon, uh, Grosjean uh, and Magnussen uh, both getting through as well. So the Haas is uh, doing a decent job in qualifying. So uh, good to see uh, for their sake that they uh, are improving. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with Ocon. That Renault uh, should be easily through. Ricardo uh, did a good enough job. But uh, anyway, so here you can see uh, that uh, worn engine. That would have been costing us uh, a significant amount of time in that race. So... Yeah, we'll uh, just have to accept the penalty and, uh, yeah, just take it and move on. Put our uh, newer set of components in. Uh, I could take a new, uh, whole new line of components, but uh, we don't really need them. Um, these components, the three, two or three that you start off with uh, for each type, uh, will easily get us through to the end of the season, so... Uh, yeah, there should be no real reason to take those extra ones. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, go ready, get ready to go uh, into the race. 
with uh, a slightly fresher engine than what we had uh, in qualifying. So uh, let's try to make up for it and uh, hope we can have a good race today for the British Grand Prix. So let's get into it. Great Britain then, one of only two countries to have held a Grand Prix in every single year of the Formula One World Championship. And the circuit extends that record further for today's Grand Prix. With good opportunities to overtake at the end of the Wellington and Hangar Straits, there's a lot of potential for close action around the 3.6 miles of the Silverstone circuit. With 18 corners and average lap speeds of around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the longest and quickest circuits on the calendar. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the scientist. They've got that grid penalty to worry about, of course, which puts them on the back foot from the get-go. It's unfortunate, but it happens to everyone at some point. You just have to accept your fate, knuckle down, and get on with the business of making up that deficit during the Grand Prix. So they'll be pushing hard today, one to watch for sure. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Sainz, Ricardo, Albon, Norris and Lance Stroll, Gasly, Kvyat, Kevin Magnussen and Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Raikkonen, Esteban Ocon and George Russell. Matsushita, Perez, they've taken a grid penalty. The Scientist and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. All right, we will try to do that, but a top 10 may be out of our reach today. This might just be uh, one of those races where we just need to hope for some good luck. No rain to interfere. Uh, soft tyres to the mediums will be the strategy. Nothing fancy we can really do there. Uh, this is also Nobuharu Matsushita's first race for us uh, here at the Galactic Thunder team. So uh, that will be interesting to see how he can fare uh, in his debut in Formula 1 here at the 70th Anniversary Grand Prix. So uh, let's get into it and get ready to go to the five red lights. And the lights are out, we are underway for the British Grand Prix. A lot of wheel spin, but a good start by Sergio Perez and Nicholas Latifi. And they're going to try and go four wide with Russell and Ocon as Matsushita's been uh, absolutely swamped on the start line. Ocon's been squeezed out by the Williams cars. We're going to try and go around the outside of our teammate, demoting him to last place. We get Ocon as well in the braking zone. We're going to try and squeeze down the inside of Latifi into the first corner. He leads us to space. We go around the outside of him and George Russell uh, into uh, the loop. And on the exit, we uh, get that position and move ourselves up into 18th position. It's been a great start for us uh, in the British Grand Prix. And we've uh, gained four positions uh, off of the start line. Perez, incidentally, has also got past Grosjean. He's gained four positions as well as we try and go around the outside of Grosjean. There's no grip out there. We can't quite get that move done. But uh, we're looking all over the place to try and get past the Haas car. But uh, no opportunities. Uh, presenting themselves at the moment. We'll see if we can get a good run uh, through Maggot and Beckett. That's not a great run uh, through Cops, just uh, completely offline there as we were uh, just looking around to try and uh, make a move on Grosjean, but uh, we've ended up making our own mistake there. So uh, we need to get our head down and uh, try and get a move on because Russell is right behind us and he's not going to be hanging around uh, after uh, losing a few spots uh, off the start. So uh, yeah, we. Uh, need to just focus and get a move on as uh, we cut off Russell at the apex there a little bit but uh, he wasn't really going for a move so I think that's all fine but uh, as we uh, get uh, to the end of the first lap uh, we have uh, gained four positions so it's a decent first lap but I feel like we may just have the pace uh, on Grosjean in these early phases if we uh, can uh, keep our act together as Lance Stroll retires from the race with a mechanical failure. Uh, unfortunate for him, he will not finish the British Grand Prix. One free position for all of us uh, fighting at the back though. So uh, that elevates us up into 17th position as we're gaining and gaining and gaining and down the inside of Romain Grosjean into uh, Brooklyn's corner. He tries to fight back on the inside of Lafield, but we'll hold the line around the outside, carry the speed 
and move ourselves ahead of Rayman Grosjean. That was a very satisfying overtake, so late on the brakes uh, compared to the Haas driver. Somehow we managed to get a stop and then uh, hold it around the outside of Luffield. That was uh, a very satisfying move and uh, moves us up into 16th. Here's the onboard from Grosjean. He just about sees us coming and leaves the room on the apex. And uh, we leave him the space on the inside of the next corner to try and take a nice wide sweeping line through. That helps us carry the speed and uh, we uh, maintain the position. Here's the onboard with Perez to show just how much later on the brakes we were uh, compared to Grosjean. And uh, yeah, that really shows the braking performance of our car uh, is mega and uh, that uh, is really helping us fight this season as uh, speaking of fighting Perez and Magnussen going side by side through Maggots and Beckett's as uh, we make a bit of a mistake through Beckett's uh, allows Ocon right on our gearbox but uh, he won't have the speed uh, on the exit to challenge us heading towards Stowe Corner but uh, as we move on uh, we are slowly catching up to Kevin Magnussen and we may be able to make the same move that we did uh, on Grosjean as we head towards uh, Brooklyn. He moves in the braking zone, we dive directly for the apex. Uh, Magnussen uh, gets the switch back to the outside of Bro uh, Luffield but uh, thankfully for us we've got the inside line. We'll be able to sweep through and uh, take that position but uh, Magnussen uh, was not giving up without a fight there and uh, yeah, he tries to go to the inside uh, towards uh, Cops corner wasn't going to work out for him there but uh, as we continue on uh, Esteban Ocon in the Renault is finally uh, waking up in this race he squeezes through down the inside of uh, Cops when running side by side towards Magnus and Beckett. that was never going to work out so uh, we backed out of that one and we'll live to fight another day Esteban Ocon uh, in that Renault you should be a lot faster than us uh, I'm not sure what he was doing in qualifying and uh, indeed at the start of this race uh, he lost a lot of time as well so uh, yeah he really uh, needs to get a move on in this race to try and get back where uh, that Renault should be and it looks like he is uh, starting that fight back but uh, speaking of fight back here comes Kevin Magnussen coming back at us down the inside into the first corner he squeezes into a gap that really uh, isn't there goes for a half spin manages to save it but uh, Magnussen a big mistake uh, there uh, that's not really an overtaking opportunity better just to uh, wait for uh, probably uh, Brooklyn's corner but uh, anyway down into pit lane we go and uh, we are going on to the medium tyres a few laps earlier than uh, what was originally scheduled for us but uh, I don't want to get undercut and uh, these soft tyres I've kind of had enough of them uh, Magnuson coming back at us is a bit of a signal that we're starting to lose pace on these tyres uh, they're probably uh, not doing too well in uh, the temperature department as well not as much of a big deal since we turned off the carcass please, temperatures please. but uh, we uh, adjust the front wing as well I thought there was a little bit of understeer more than I would have liked uh, in that first stint so we're increasing the front downforce a little bit for uh, the later stint and we'll see uh, if that uh, gives us a little more pace or uh, at least a little, a little more comfort uh, later in the race uh, we can't really challenge the cars ahead of us I don't think uh, in this race uh, as uh, we get the blue flags uh, but the Mercedes cars are yet to pit so we'll still be on the lead lap uh, once they do but uh, as we continue on uh, we overtake our teammate Matsushita and uh, he uh, comes out of pit lane uh, in last position but uh, that is only because uh, no one else uh, has really pit no, no one else in our battle uh, just the two of us uh, teammates uh, have made uh, that pit stop and uh, as Grosjean uh, comes into the pits this will be the real test uh, for Matsushita with the undercut uh, on these cars will he be able to make some moves uh, without uh, having to make them on track and uh, he does in fact come out of uh, the pits uh, ahead of Grosjean uh, I should say Grosjean comes out of the pits behind Matsushita uh, to be more accurate there but uh, now it's just Latifi Magnussen uh, and I think Russell but uh, as we continue on uh, you can see uh, Latifi is the last one uh, to make his stop and Matsushita has uh, been able to get the undercut benefit on all of these drivers uh, we were already ahead of uh, the battle of the backmarkers if you will but uh, Matsushita has uh, made a real benefit uh, from the undercar he's overtaken the Hasses uh, and indeed George Russell as well so it's uh, been a great stint in the race uh, or the early part of this stint uh, has been a great phase of the race uh, for Matsushita 
and uh, he is looking very, very pacey at the okay, moment. So all our tire pressure data is reading zero at the moment. Assuming they still look inflated to you, we're going to guess it's just a bad sensor. Shouldn't be anything to worry about. But uh, while Matsushita is going well, we've got some sensor issues. Hopefully that won't evolve into any deployed. further issues as the safety car comes out for Pierre Gasly who retires from the race with a mechanical failure. Unfortunate for the Frenchman, but uh, he will not finish the British Grand Prix. He retires and pulls up uh, at uh, Maggots and Beckett's. So uh, it takes us a full uh, three and a half laps, almost four laps uh, by the time we catch up uh, to Esteban Ocon at the back of the field. We were almost a full lap behind the leaders. So uh, that was a very well-timed safety car for us. And uh, it gets us right back in contention with uh, the likes of Esteban Ocon and Danny Kvyat in front of us. So maybe we'll be able to make some moves on these guys uh, on the restart. We'll have plenty of time to uh, save up some rich mix, save up some battery. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to go racing uh, on the restart. We're trying to go racing out the safety car here as we uh, caught up very suddenly to the train. Safety car is in this lab. Safety car in this lab. Let's make sure those tyres are up to temperature. And remember, there is no overtaking until the timing line. Stay in position until the green flags. So, we are ready for the restart. We've saved up plenty of fuel and rich mix. And we've got plenty of battery power to deploy. So we'll see if we can go with uh, Esteban Ocon and Danny Kvyat up ahead uh, on the restart. There are some lap cars to deal with uh, in this train. I think Latifi and Kevin Magnussen uh, a lap down in this race so they potentially could play a part uh, for us if they can hold up uh, some of the cars ahead uh, that would be very very helpful for us so as we go on the restart it's an ordinary one though and uh, Esteban Ocon gets away from us as uh, we can't quite get through uh, the final corner in the first few corners uh, the way uh, that we really would have liked to and uh, Esteban Ocon is away and clear uh, for the time being but uh, like I said, there's um, backmarker cars ahead as uh, they, you can see them uh, moving off to the left to uh, try to get out of the way but uh, they're causing uh, minor amounts of chaos uh, along the straight there and as uh, we continue on uh, after we've cleared them uh, uh, Esteban Ocon is trying to get past Magnuson. they might have made some contact there Ocon slow on the apex heading into Beckett's we dive around the outside and make the move stick on Esteban Ocon and Kevin Magnuson uh, is going to very kindly move out of our way along the left side uh, of the hangar straight here and we have absolutely scored one there uh, on Esteban Ocon who was getting caught up behind Kevin Magnuson through Maggots and Beckett and uh, we were able to go straight through there and uh, that has uh, really uh, turned our race around and uh, gained us an extra position on a car that we really uh, would not ordinarily be ahead of. It's uh, still uh, not a point paying uh, opportunity for us in this race, but uh, it is awesome to see that uh, we can take advantage of those moments as Matsushita sends one up the inside of us. So uh, one position up, one position down for us. And now Russell trying to go side by side with us through Maggots and Beckett's. He's got the move done. Brilliant move there by George Russell. And he's uh, gained that position as well. So uh, it's uh, now uh, our job to try to fight back. Uh, against the British driver in the Williams as we head towards Stowe. We have a look to the inside. No move to be made there though and Russell holds on. So now we have to uh, really try our best to uh, close up to him once again through Maggots and Beckett's. Uh, it's taken us a while to get back in contention with him because he has DRS from our teammate who uh, has done a brilliant job uh, all day today. So it's been a great debut race uh, for Nobuharu Matsushita. But uh, for now, uh, our focus is firmly on George Russell. So uh, if we can get a nice run out of cops, uh, we might be able to make a move into the final corner. If we're deep on the brakes, we go very deep. Russell locks up, but we make the move on the inside. We're going to try and hold it around the outside uh, of the final corner. And uh, we make the move around there, uh, just like Ben Biscow. And uh, we move ourselves back up into... Uh, 15th position so it's currently 14th 15th for Matsushita and myself so uh, it's a very solid result for our team uh, in this uh, 70th anniversary Grand Prix and uh, much higher honestly than uh, what uh, I was expecting and uh, Matsushita has had uh, some very very good pace so uh, it will be quite a challenge to catch him uh, before the end of the race but uh, I have a feeling we might just be able to do it if we can get uh, get our act together 
So uh, as we continue on, you'll notice we are now on the penultimate lap of the race and we are closing right up to the back of Matsushita. It, it did take us a long time to uh, be able to keep up with him and uh, I think uh, maybe he is starting to run out of uh, rich mix and uh, we are still uh, trying to uh, deploy it and that could be the difference but uh, obviously we only have a limited supply as well and uh, we also have to look after engine temperatures it was all very sort of difficult to manage but uh, we found ourselves in the right position at the right time uh, in the DRS range uh, in the closing laps and we still have uh, a little bit of energy on our side uh, to spend on uh, trying to overtake our teammate but uh, at the same time I'm not going to do anything crazy uh, like we did on George Russell because at the end of the day uh, he is our teammate and I don't want to cause a crash uh, when we are in a pretty good position uh, and, uh, scoring 14th and 15th and uh, this has overall been a, fr a pretty decent race so uh, I don't want to end it uh, on a bad note so uh, we've only got one lap to go now as we uh, head through the uh, last sector so we uh, we need to pick an opportunity and uh, just go for it if we can. So uh, we've been looking at uh, Matsushita through, uh, throughout this lap and I think our best opportunity is, final lap, final lap the uh, is probably into Brooklands if we can get close enough uh, in that section of the track. So uh, here we go uh, through the first few corners and into Village and the Loop. We'll see if we can get a nice run on the exit. We are gaining uh, on our teammate. This is as close as we have ever been to him since he overtook us but we're just not quite close enough uh, but we'll try uh, with the DRS we are gaining and gaining in the slipstream and we might just make it we have a look to the inside but uh, at the end of the day again I said I'm not going to try anything crazy and uh, we we're nowhere near uh, being able to make a, a clean and decisive move on our teammate there so uh, we're just going to sit and wait and hope that uh, we can maybe make the move uh, at uh, Stowe so uh, let's hope that uh, we can follow close enough uh, through Cops, flat through there uh, and on the light fuel uh, at the end of the race and now through Maggots and Beckett's. This is the part of the track I've been struggling with all day and uh, again you can see not quite getting through there as smoothly as Matsushita but we're still uh, in contention with our teammate as uh, we are running out of fuel to spend but it would be okay uh, to go to the end as we're gaining and gaining and gaining on our teammate look to the inside we throw it towards the corner but Matsushita is carrying a lot of mid-corner speed there as well to be fair to him and uh, there's just no opportunity for us Matsushita has done enough today and he is going to uh, come home ahead of me uh, in his debut race in Formula 1 a superb drive by the Japanese driver in his first ever race that's the end of the race we'll see you in part for me P14 for Matsushita, P15 for us. I'm pretty happy with that day's work. Driver of the day goes to Sergio Perez. He made a lot of spots. Plenty of action here at Silverstone. It was a memorable race, and what an impressive victory. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So it's going to be Valtteri Bottas that leads Mercedes home for a 1-2 finish here at uh, the 70th anniversary British Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel gets on the podium for Ferrari. So let's review the updated driver's standings. Valtteri Bottas passes his rival to take over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, you can't fault anything that Sergio Perez did out on the track today. He drove flawlessly, making him an easy pick. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. What a race by Sergio Perez, 20th place, I think, uh, to finish in ninth. He made a lot of overtakes and uh, really charged through the field. Uh, we've had a decent one too from dead last 22nd uh, on the grid uh, to finish in P15 uh, is not a bad effort at all. Uh, I think uh, in an ideal world we, we uh, probably could have beat Matsushita but uh, he had very good pace uh, in the middle of that uh, final stint and uh, he got the move done on us. We could never 
uh, quite get him back. So uh, he very well deserves uh, that 14th position in his debut race. So uh, he'll be uh, very, very happy with that, I imagine. But uh, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else we could have done uh, in this race to get ourselves further up the grid or up uh, in the finishing order. Uh, we were very, very lucky to beat Esteban Ocon today. Uh, he started down the order, had a lot of trouble getting through the field and then uh, got tangled up with Kevin Magnussen. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Magnussen going for a half spin there. Able to save it without losing uh, a terrible amount of time. Did lose uh, a pile of positions though. And uh, that would ultimately uh, probably cost him the lead lap at the end and uh, lead to the rest of the chaos that unfolded uh, with Esteban Ocon. But uh, whoop, did I just damage one of the Mercedes cars there? Oops. That, if there wasn't damage, uh, there was definitely uh, a bit of contact. Anyway, we, 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 well, we won't worry about that. that. That didn't happen. There's the move on Esteban Ocon. I did. Uh, very much enjoy that move, very uh, opportunistic as he was uh, tangled up on the apex and uh, we're able to uh, take full advantage of that situation so uh, I was very happy about that one and then uh, the battle uh, with George Russell uh, very very satisfying move uh, on him as well uh, in the end as we uh, went diving down the inside he locked up uh, actually made some contact on the apex there but uh, we got away with it and uh, were able to come around to uh, take 15th place in the end. So uh, a decent race for us. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? Uh, then we didn't really have a strategy any different uh, to everyone else. We uh, undercut a few people, uh, both with myself uh, and Matsushita, that helped, really helped us, uh, I guess, get ahead of the pack. But uh, other than that, it was just race as hard as we can. You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? Well, I think uh, we uh, maximised our opportunities today and uh, yeah, we got the most out of uh, what we had uh, in this case. So uh, yeah. Why do you think you weren't as quick as your teammate today? Um, I'm not sure. He uh, is obviously a very, very good driver, and uh, in uh, what is his very first race, he did uh, an absolutely superb job. Uh, there were a few mistakes on my end, and uh, yeah, he just had the pace. It's uh, as simple as that. It was more like dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? I wouldn't go that far. I think. Uh, it was certainly, uh, we certainly made some aggressive moves. Uh, some people certainly made some aggressive moves on us. Uh, Kevin Magnussen uh, comes to mind, but uh, it obviously didn't uh, pay out uh, for him. And uh, yeah, there was obviously a few issues uh, I saw with Magnussen and Ocon uh, coming together. But uh, I mean, we've made some aggressive overtakes as well, but there's no issues. Great. Well, that's everything. Thanks, Claire. All right, so we uh, gain four points on Gasly in the rivalry as he uh, failed to finish. We've got that basically in the bag now. We've got almost double uh, what his score is. But uh, as for Acclaim, uh, we've got uh, level 10 in Acclaim now. So uh, I think that means we have another sponsor to sign. Um, so that is very, very good news for us. 676,500. Uh, dollars in the bank for us, another hundred thousand for uh, neither of us damaging the cars today. So uh, that's two and a half mil in the bank in total. Morning, boss. This week's income from the sponsors has cleared, and we're making good profit against our running costs. So we've got a lot of time between now and the next race. We'll do the two-day weight training for Matsushita. That will increase his pace by one. Not that he seems to need it uh, at the moment. We'll also do the two-day sponsor event conference to uh, boost up that team acclaim that will cost us uh, 5k. But uh, we can also do the uh, vehicle PR filming, uh, which will earn us 10k back, as well as uh, boosting our team acclaim uh, quite a lot uh, as well. So... Uh, that is how we'll fill up the time uh, until the next race.
So we've also got enough money to spend on uh, a new facil facility upgrade, so we're going to go with personnel, and the only thing we haven't upgraded uh, on the base level there is pace uh, for Matsushita, so uh, we're going to apply that one, and uh, that will increase his pace uh, by 5, so he is going to be an absolute rocket ship very soon. And uh, as I mentioned, we have enough uh, acclaim to sign a new sponsor. That third slot is now open, and one of the good options that I spotted uh, almost immediately is uh, this one, Satellite. Uh, we get uh, a much bigger bonus and weekly payout than uh, most, or if not all of the other ones, and the goal is to do 100 laps uh, in a weekend, and that includes uh, Matsushita's laps. So uh, even at Spa, which will be coming up uh, in a few rounds time, uh, we almost cannot fail that, uh, given that uh, if we both do the full 44 laps, uh, assuming we're both finished, that's 88 laps already, and uh, between practice and qualifying, uh, it will easily cover the rest of that, so uh, we are going to sign them up straight away, and uh, we will not miss that opportunity to pull in uh, a lot of money for the team very, very quickly. Uh, in those uh, rounds. You can see now uh, the uh, livery update going back to what uh, we had before this round and uh, with the new uh, satellite sponsors on the car uh, as well. So uh, that is sponsorship done. Okay, we've had the new parts come through from the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next Grand Prix. Awesome stuff. I think that was a weight reduction upgrade uh, coming in on the chassis side. We still can't afford to repair that durability upgrade. We will get to it at some point, but uh, we're working on the performance at the time. The durability uh, isn't really an issue to us uh, at the moment, so uh, we'll just leave that to the wayside for the time being. But uh, other than that, uh, there's not too much else left to say. So I will say thank you very much for watching this video to the end. And I will see you next time for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Thank you and goodbye.